At the end of the 1914-18 war, the weary men returned from the battlefields of Europe to a land fit for heroes. But somehow, things didn't turn out quite that way. In just a few years, the mine owners of South Wales told the miners, you'll work longer hours for less wages. But in the streets of Porth in the Rhondda Valley, the battle cry rose. Not a minute on the day, and not a penny off our pay. And the miners went on strike. It was a long and a bitter fight. Times were hard and children went hungry. Many families left the valleys to seek a better life in the big cities all over the world. This song is dedicated to them and their descendants, whatever they may be. You left your homes and valleys all those years ago, like many of the young men. And as you left the station You knew you were leaving The rivers and the mountains and the mines You came into the cities Left your friends at home To make yourself a better life was your aim But the heartbeat of the rumble Is not a thing you see But it's always calling out your name life at the moment for you? Mm, pretty good considering my age I'm, yeah I'm, I'm nothing to complain about mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so how old are you? Uh, uh, I'm near 83 now <laughs> right yeah 
Yeah, so um, you keep him busy then, you're always, you know... Yes, I always try to keep active. Mm. Because mm. once you stop being active, you might as well be dead. <laughs> That's it. Si. So, um, going back to your sort of earlier life, what was your profession uh, before retiring? Well, I worked on the buildings, but I ended up being a painter and decorator. And put my hand to little things, nothing particular. Mm. But probably my main one is painting and decorating. How did you find that? How was painting and decorating for you? Well, I used to love it. But not anymore, obviously. Mm. It's, it's funny, I, I always wanted to be a carpenter. But I ended up painter and decorator. That's what it was years ago. You want to just go with the flow. Right. Were you quite creative then as well? Um, being yeah, a painter decorator, have you always had a creative brain? Yeah, I like making things. I like... Yeah. I... That's what I do. I just make things, change things, and just enjoy life. Mm -hmm. It's called potching, if anybody knows what that means. Yeah. It's doing nothing but busy. <laughs> right. Do you think then that your job as a painter decorator sort of um, helped you in, you know, creating the cross or having the ideas to think outside the box and things like that? Well, I don't know. I just, basically, I, I just do what I want to do. Yeah. If I like doing a thing, I will do a thing. If I don't like doing a thing, I don't do a thing. It's as simple as that. Mm. So then talking about the cross then, it became visible on Chala Mountain on the 29th of September 2005. Yep. So it's the 18th anniversary this year. Um, so, yeah, why did you decide uh, to build it? What was the, the motivation behind doing it? Well, my best friend of childhood, when I was young, obviously, we used to play on the mountain and whatever you used to get up to. And I went to visit him because he moved away. And talking to him about old times, he said, don't forget, Glyn, if I go first, I want my ashes scattered on the mountain. I said, where? He said, I don't know, it's up to you. I said, well, what? He said, whatever. So we just left it like that. Because I said, well, so do I. Mm. My ashes are going to be scattered up there as well. Right. And when did you... But what, what really yeah. motivated me motivated me. I thought about it, I thought, well, what can I do? What can I... But a little family walking up the road one day, I was sweeping the drive and they had a big wreath dad. And they said, excuse me, do you know where the tip is? I said, well, there's a few tips around here. I said, what's it about? But they said, my grandfather, Ivor Hall, he wants his Ashes scattered on the mountain, on the tip where they used to play. When would this be now? What sort of date are we talking this about? This would be in 2004. Right. Okay. No, it's probably early 2005 because that's when I went to see my, my mate, that's right. So I knew I were all, funny enough, because we used to play snowballs, snowballs against them, the big boys and the small boys. So I said, well, there's a tip there and there's a tip there, take a, take a pick. So they done it. They took the wreath up, stuck it up, scattered his ashes. And I thought, why on a tip? Why isn't there a nice spot there for people to scatter their loved one's ashes? Mine, my, my mate. i got to do something about it. And it can't be anything but a cross. It can't be an X, a dot a spot hmm. and it's got to be seen it's no good putting something up on a mountain and you can't see it did the cross come to your mind straight so away the cross then? came to my mind but hmm. it had to be big and I thought oh how big is it going to be so then my brain started ticking over and off I go across the valley out with my binoculars looking up but found the spot and I thought right I'll go up there tomorrow and have a look around so I goes up there Stone everywhere. I thought, this is a spot. 
So the following day I got up, four white carrier bags, placed them on the mountain, come back down, cross the valley, out of the binoculars, look again, up, one is lower than the other or higher than the other. Not this took enough. months as well, didn't it? Like this, 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 this took preparation. a period of three to four months. Mm. But it wasn't obviously every day because some days I didn't feel like it. Mm. And other days I think, what the hell am <laughs> I doing up here? Yeah. But then it got to me. I got to finish. I got to... I've got to do, now I'm in a frame of mind. So I battled on. One day I'd go up there for half an hour, get fed up, come down, ah, forget about it. No, mustn't forget about it. <laughs> up the following, perhaps week, I spent two hours up there, moving everything, shifting. And then it started to shape. I thought, well, it's coming together. I've got to keep it covered, keep it hidden. Otherwise people... Was that say, difficult to, to hide, to keep? everything hidden? Pardon? Was it difficult to keep everything hidden at the time? Well, I had to cover it with ferns and gorse and anything else to get rid of the shape because people, if somebody noticed it, everybody would say, what's he doing up there? Yeah. Whoever he is. <laughs> and then, you know, complaints or nosy people going up and interfering with me and I was, nah, keep it covered again. So that's what I done. Right. And you said before as well that you went like the the car park uh, near uh, the monkey club in yeah. Pandy and then like the was it the the, the new bypass. Yeah. yeah. So could you describe that a little bit? The, what you did? Well, it had the, whatever you put on the mountain, it mustn't be wonky as they call it. Yeah. It's got to be like not who the hell put that up there? You need glasses, <laughs> so it had to be pretty perfect. So that's what I went for. It had to be right in the right spot for people to look up and say, blimey, who put that up there? Mm. <laughs> Instead of saying, what plonker put that up there in that shape? <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that's what it all... But with binoculars and all that as well then, you would sort of have yeah, to well, the measure binoc- the angles. The binoculars were to make sure that the lines of stone that I was putting down between the bags, it had to be right. Mm. It couldn't be up and down, in and out. It had to be right. Mm. Sometimes they throw a line across, a, a bricklayer's core they call it, just to get the centre of the stonework reasonable. Or as long as it was reasonable from a distance, it looks good. Mm. Mm. So um, during this time then, did you, you kept it to yourself? You didn't even tell, tell your wife, you didn't tell Nobody anybody Nobody knew about anything. It. Right. The only thing I said to my daughter, well... I told my daughter, look, I've got to do something for my mate Edwin. And I got, what a, I said, what about a cross on a mountain? And she said, Dad, whatever you want to do in life, you do it. As long as you don't offend anybody else, just mm. do it. Mm. So I did. My motto, don't talk, shoot. Yeah. And that's what I did. And then with your friend Edwin, Edwin Thomas, um, that agreement, was that going back... Sort of when you were when you were young then you know when you were speaking about building that cr- uh, you know doing something in memory. Of... No, I mean, at our age when I went to visit him, as we 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 getting on we was getting on about we was sixty five. Right, so approaching retirement and yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. obviously where your ashes are going to be scattered right. or whatever else. So that's what he said to me, and I thought. Good idea. So do I. Yeah. You but spend a lot of time up there as, as children oh, on that yeah. mountain I, playing I up there. It's very sentimental to I you. would say every day up there, mm. I would say. Especially in the fine weather because there was nothing else about. We just had the mountain playing cowboys and Indians and yeah. chasing or whatever, hide and seek and all this. What kids did do years ago. Mm. No iPads, iPhones in those no. days. <laughs> No, the mountains, obviously, these days, there's, there's lots of, like, trees and things like that. The mountains were bare then. Well, there was Wimberies, we call them. Yeah, Wimberies. Wimberies, you used to love them. Pick them. Yeah. Bring them down for mum to make a tart. And, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, when you eventually then, when, when was it, when did you feel that, right, um, this cross, when were you ready to 
reveal it then? Would it have been like in the August time or it, there was when no, was it? There was no time limit. Right. It, obviously, it'd have to be finished before I reveal it. I didn't pick a certain date. Right. But I had to pick a certain day with no rain. Yeah. <laughs> because... And we don't with our Welsh weather as well. We, yeah, it's no we, good we, painting we, it with Santex and coming down and then it chuck it down with rain. Mm. You just wash it off. Yeah. So it would have been pointless. Mm. Mm. So I had to have the right weather. Was that particular year then, the summertime of 2005, was it pretty good weather in general, if you remember, uh, you remember it was, that? It, it was better summers and better winters. Yeah. Because in those days we had four foot of snow during Christmas period, winter period. Mm. Not four spots of snowflakes. We had snow, big snow. Mm. Mm. And summers were lovely and warm. So, yeah. so uh, when you revealed it then, the cross, on the 29th of September, 2005, how did you initially feel? Was it sort of like a sense of, um, were you excited, anxious, uh, sort of... Conver- I was excited and nervous, really. Yeah. But I had to do it the early hours of the morning, just after dawn, because I didn't want to see people watching me, unveiling this stonework, because it was stone then. So, so I, that paint, at that point, it was not, no, it it was not just, paint? it was just ordinary stone, covered with bracken, ferns, whatever you like to call it. But then I had to do it all in one go. I couldn't stop. So all the gear was up there, and as soon as I decided, frame of mind, on the weather, up I shot. Mm. And then I had to do it all in an hour, an hour and a half, two hours. I just mixed and splashed and mixed and splashed. And all yourself, because obviously the carrying aspect as well, it would have been... All that was up there. Yeah. That was all in place. Mm. The water traps, rainwater traps, were in place. I had four or five of them. So I always had something like 25 litres of water available because it had to be thinned. It's easier to thin it up there than to carry it up. Yeah. So yeah, everything was in place. So how many hours a day? Just, just another question I forgot to ask. Cause like, how many hours per day were you spending on, on this in total with, go, you know, with the binoculars going up there and sorting out the angles? Was it sort of several hours per day? Well, I, I would say... On average, it'd be at least three hours a day, a day. initially, mm. to get it in position. Yeah. And then it was what I felt like it. Of course, I had to keep an eye on it as well, that it was always covered. It didn't look like a cross, because people in the Ronda was always looking up the mountain. Yeah. Anybody up the mountain, they'd be out, oh, what's he doing up they there? Spotted, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So then, um, I think was it a week later the uh, the Ronda leader reported, or was it a couple of people in in Tonopandi yeah, spotted well, it initially, or as soon as it was visually, you know, you see it. Mm. Uh, there was people over in the shop over there. They were outside looking up because it it wasn't there last night. It was there this morning. <laughs> yeah, in Tonopandi. In Tonopandi, yeah. yeah. Looking, looking over it, there. It, the little shop on the hill over there and. Mm. He said, who the hell put that up there? It wasn't there last night. And people are saying, well, I just go home from Port Call or somewhere and it wasn't there. Mm. <laughs> but now, who put that Where's there? Where's this come from? Because yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it appeared overnight, really. Although I was up there for a period of a couple of months, you know, hours and whatever. And that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> but... When I done it, I said, oh, God, what the hell have I done? What have I, what have I created? Because people started talking about it. And I, started, I thought, I better take it down. And I thought, I can't. It'll take me days and days to take it down. So I just got to leave it there and hope for the best. Yeah. So but when the Rodney wrote the article on it, um, how, how, do, how did you feel about that uh, initially? When, when people started saying nice things about it, I felt proud. Yeah. But when people started saying 
not very nice things about it, like graffiti and spoiling the, the mountain. And I felt embarrassed and I thought, well... That was, well, I guess, the minority, though, that was, wasn't that, it? That was, yeah. The majority but, was positive. But there's only one going to dislike you and it hurts. You know, it does mm. hurt. Mm. If you thought there was 12 people loved what you've done, and there was always one say, yeah. what a load of rubbish. You should be made to, you should take it down. And I thought, everybody got an opinion. But I did feel a bit hurt when people were condemning it. Because I thought I'd done a good thing. But I still think I'd done a good thing. Especially now, people are using it. And I love that. When I go up there and I see little piles of ashes and flowers and little candles and little solar lights, I just think, yes. It was worth it, yeah. It's worth it. People are using it. Yeah. But the thing is, they're using it before me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know. Well, it obviously was a success and, and the vast majority of people found it great because a book called... The Ron the Cross has been written about it by Phil Rowlands. So um, tell us a bit about that. What was the, the idea behind the book? You know, were you involved in it or did someone approach you? Well, I was talking to my friend Phil and I said, I'm fed up with people asking why, what is it? And people are giving them wrong information. It's just paint or it's just stones. So I thought, how can I put it right? And he said, well, why don't you write a book? I said, I can't write a book. He said, no, I'll write the book. I'll ask you the question and you can tell me and I'll put it, I'll write it down. So I thought, I felt a bit nervous about it, mate. Even a book. But he's such a good guy with words. He could put words together like I could never string them together. And he's a good guy. And he done me proud. He, the way he put it in there, he made me feel as if I was like someone really, really special, or I'm not. I'm just a Ronda guy. Mm. Just an ordinary bloke. But the book's been pretty successful. It's been bought from people from all over the world, and um, as far as, is it Australia? And so, so they tell me, you know, yeah. you get little feedbacks of families visiting from other countries, and they're saying, yeah, we bought the book, we know all about it, where is it? And yeah, gobsmacked me. Yeah, and it's done. Is is it now? Um, since the book's been written, there's uh, the Chiara Cross is on the like Google Maps, and it's it's sort of a landmark. You know, it's it's known as a as a Ronda landmark and things like this. And people have have come. There's been the coaches and things like that as well. Where people have travelled here to go up and have a look. Well, I've heard those stories, but I don't really know. I know a lot of people want to go up there and I just tell them it's difficult. You know, you've got to be reasonably fit. And when you go near it, it's not as good as what it looks from the bottom of the valley. Because it's like everything else, you go near to a thing, you see flaws and what's that and you know. But yeah. But what, what I'm really proud of is Google i put it on the map. They put it on the map, yeah. They, it's like a, like almost like a street view <coughs> thing, isn't it? Yeah. When they put street view on it, I was gobsmacked <laughs> because I thought anybody in the world now can visit the cross, tap the centre of the cross, and they can see the view of the valley. Yeah. Which is it's a beautiful a, view, isn't it? View. For anyone who hasn't been up there, they yeah, exactly, yeah. And the, what advice? Because I I've been up there several times. What advice? Would you give to someone who's who's interested in you know going up there? Then you know um, what's the best route and things like that. Well, I think there's only one decent route, and it's the one I've used from day one, mm. from childhood, I suppose. It used to be sheep track. So the sheep used to come down from the mountains and get in the ash bins and whatever, and. That was the easiest way up for the ship, so it was the easiest way up for me. So I kept it open because gorse, this gorse had it growing and it was, you can't get through it. 
but I kept it open. That was another job I had to do, to keep the path open so that people can get up there. Because it's no good putting somebody up there if people can't get up there to scatter the little bird lashes. So I just had to keep it open. And that's been a bit of a problem of mine because they are always going to carry cutters or something to cut through the gorse and keep it open. And if you, if you have been up that way, you've probably seen the way through the gorse. Mm. Because if it's not a way through that gorse, you will mm. never get through it. Right. So, so you I, need to be sort of like, I guess, do you need to be reasonably fit, you know, to tackle the mountain? Would you say that, you, you know, you've got to be... Well, I think you're only as fit as you want to be. If, if you don't want to be fit, you sit in the house or in the chair, but you've got to have a motive to move. People run around streets. People jog to keep the physical and mental being together. And it's, they love it. And if they love it, you'll do it. If you don't like doing it, you don't do it, mm. obviously. But I, that was my project. I had something to keep going. And I still use it to keep going today. I still climb that mountain. I still keep it white and keep it clean. And keep it tidy because there's a lot of these young kids they go up there with bottles and cans and <laughs> God bless them and they leave them up there and I got to pick them up. But it's a part of my fitness, I suppose. Yeah. How often do you go up there now these days then? I probably, I go up there probably twice a week. If not, I've been up there sometimes five days a week. But it's all according to what I've got to do up there. If it looks okay, I leave it alone. But sometimes I've got to go up there because there's something not right. Because I can see it with my binocular. <laughs> there's something been growing there. Maybe ferns come through and or stinging at us though. So I go up and I just tidy up. Yeah. Keep it white and keep it clean. <laughs> And then, what well, like the best time to go up there? Is it a particular time? Would you say the spring, summer, or is it? I would say the best time to go up there is when you want to go up there, because you want to. You've got to want to do something, because it's very hard to do something that you don't want to do. But yeah. it's so easy if you want to do it. Yeah, it's all in the mind, isn't it? It's all in your mind, and you've mm. got to have the right frame of mind to carry something up there. On your back. <laughs> and you just got to be... And it makes you fit anyway. By wanting to do it, it keeps you fit. Yeah. Yeah. And what about then some of the, the stories then? Like I've heard about... Um, what's the, the story with, with the child and the RE teacher? Oh, in yeah. the, is it Tonopan? Is it Tonopandi? The Catholic Tonopan? school in Tonopandi. Yeah. And... Um, this young teacher, she was telling me the story about it. She said, one of the little kids stood up and said, Miss, is it right that Jesus got crucified on the cross? And she said, yes, that's correct. Is it that one up there, Miss? <laughs> and he pointed through the window up to the cross. So from the school, they can see the cross. And yes, they yeah. can see it from a Catholic school over there, yeah. 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 <laughs> and, a, uh, and another little story was, I did have a, a card of them, like a, uh, what would I say, a greetings card. Yeah. They all, this Sunday school, they signed, all the kids signed it. And they said, if anything happens, we'll go up and look after it for you. And I thought, that was so touching. But I don't know whether I misplaced it, left it in one of the books, and someone would have borrowed it. Yeah. <laughs> or... or I haven't given it back, but it's disappeared. But that was a lovely story. They all signed this card. They wanted to look after it for me. I thought. Ah, oh, that's wow. great. Yeah, really touching that was then, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. 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 And was that was that a re was that recent then? No, um, that was the very almost from the beginning, really. Right. Yeah. 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 I only wish that I glued it down somehow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because 
You've I got the memories though, you? you know. You yeah, I remember it well. Remember I, it I well. do remember it. Yeah. yeah. And there was about, I would say, 14 children signed this card and marvellous. Ah, great. So, obviously, yeah, it's the 18th anniversary uh, this year. So, 18 years on, would they be etched into local history and becoming a Ronda land- landmark? You know, how, how do you feel, you know, sitting here today with me, um, you know? I feel a bit, what's the word, humbled. Humbled, yeah. Has it gone, like, quick then? You know, does it seem like only yesterday that you that you built it or is it... It doesn't seem like 18 years. Yeah. It, it just doesn't because I've always wanted it. I want to look after it. It's my responsibility. And I always say, if I can't do it, why should I get someone else to do it? Hmm. But apparently, at some stage, I'm going to be all too old. At the moment, I'm pretty good. You're still, it takes yeah. me 20 minutes now instead of five minutes. And some days it takes me longer than that. But um, The main thing is you get up there, though. And that's, that's, it doesn't matter how long it takes. No, it's, it doesn't. And it's, it's no. still, I can still see that it's, um, <clears throat> you know, yeah, it's like it's, it's your baby, isn't it, that yeah. cross? Yeah. I never look to the top of the mountain now. Head down, look where I'm going, and the journey seems shorter. Hmm. When you look at a distance, you know, oh, I've got to climb all the way up there. Nah, not today. But no, head down, follow the path. Mm. Don't look up, just look where you're going. Yeah. And the next minute, you're there. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, it's almost like sort of like walking before you run, isn't it? It's just, those baby steps, isn't it? It's, just, yeah. it's sort of... Yeah. Mm. i done Penavan about three years ago. And I looked to the... You see all the people walking up that path, and you look to the top, and you say, yeah, "Nah, well, I don't well, up well, there." Yeah. Mm. But head down, look at the path, make sure you're on the right path, and the journey is shorter. You don't, yeah, you don't notice how far it is. No, yeah, you make yeah, you make it sort of attainable and yeah, real. You, yeah, just not by thinking too far ahead, isn't it? That's that's the yeah. key. So, and I, hmm. funny, funny enough, I met, on the way up, there's loads of people, and there was a, a young couple, they must have been in their 20s, and I was like 70, and she was complaining to her husband or boyfriend, whoever they were, I can't go no further, I don't want to go any further. So I stopped and I said to her, excuse me love, did I hear you right, you don't want to go up there? Oh, she said, it's too far for me. I said, well, I'm 70. And if I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> and I'm going for it. And she got up there. Oh, and I played. seen her up at the top and yeah. I thought, I clapped her. Well, well done. done. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And that's, that's the same thing we can apply to to the cross as well, isn't it? For people who may be a bit yeah, overwhelmed by it. it, it, it just so sort of, far. Yeah. yeah. Use that yeah. mindset that you've just explained then. Yeah. Yeah. And I remember, I remember and she was all beaming. Because she'd done it. She didn't want to do it, but because I, I sort of like, if an old man can do it, you can do it. Yeah. And it, give her that motivation. It, it that, give her that it, yeah. incentive to do it. Yeah, it is. Again, it'd be mental, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's, yeah, yeah. It, and it is. Everything yeah. is, you've got to want to do things. Because mm. if you don't want to do it, you'll never do it. No. And it's a chore. But to me, that... It's a cross to bear, if you would have Yeah. But I've got to keep it going. Going and back it, to the cross then, because um, I think you said in the book that, is it Lee Bridge? So you you nominated him yeah, to he, continue with the, the maintenance of it. So, yeah. Um, yeah, tell us a little bit about that. Well, he's a bowling friend of mine, and he joined our club when he was 14. Um, he loved bowls, and we brought him on, all us old people. I think he's in his 40s now, so I'm double his age. And he always, he was a friend, he was a friend of ours, mm. a young friend, and he have a pint with us and talk about things. And of course he got involved with it. He wanted to come up and see what I was, what it was all about. And I said, don't forget, you can do this when I'm gone. And he said, yeah, I probably will. So... Him and another couple of guys give me a hand to put the poppies on. 
on the 11th of November. Uh, Is that Remembrance? Yeah, Remembrance. Remembrance Day, yeah. Yeah, because it, other than scattering ashes, it's got to be something for people to reflect on. Like we've done yeah. the national health when COVID was around, how good yeah. they were. So I put NHS up there mm. to show that we appreciated them. So the gra- your gratitude, mm. like, yeah. And now it's poppies, obviously. Right. So um, so basically then you've been sort of ensured that, you know, um, that the, the cross will continue to be maintained and looked after then, basically, because that's what, that's what you want, isn't it? Yeah, well, he said he would do it, but even he could lose interest as he's getting older. And if I live much longer, he'd be too old to go back. <laughs> <laughs> or he wouldn't want to go back. But I still think there's enough people out there that have scattered their loved ones' ashes up there, and they go up there and they pay respect to their loved ones. They take little bunches of flowers up there and, and all little mannerisms and things. Little stone Bibles and little trinkets and... Yeah, and when I see them up there, I think, oh, thank God they're using it. Because there's nothing worse than doing all that and then nobody wants it. Yeah. So that's what keeps you going. It's, see, without other, other people, you were nothing. If there's no other people in the world, you are nothing. Yeah, we so we social creatures essentially. Well, we yeah. need yeah, we need to even you yeah. know we need to interact with people, don't we? We need to and it's good to talk and yeah, to exchange I, ideas. I, I didn't put it up there for myself. Initially it was for my friend, but I wanted other people to use it because people go everywhere in Scott and Ashes. My mum and dad ashes are in the bowling park where they used to bowl. So not everybody's bowler, so... Yeah. <clears throat> and just going back to your friend as well, because a lot of people um, want to clarify something. Your friend is still alive, isn't he? He's still yeah. alive and kicking. Yeah, because that, yeah. that's... A lot of people thought that he, he passed away. Yeah, so. well, that was, that was the story going around. I'd done it for my friend that passed away. And I, I can't tell one person. I've got to tell everybody to get the story right. Yeah. It was basically for him and myself. And then when other people was doing it as well, that made me feel better. Because my family is beginning to go up there now. My, my two sisters are up there in the form of ashes, of course. And my brother-in-law and friends and aunties and uncles, they are up there as well. So it's like... The family is getting together. Yeah. How does that make you feel then? When you, you know, you realise that so many people have, have scattered their ashes uh, up there. How does that make you feel? Well, humble, proud. Proud, yeah. And, oh, so... So what's the word? It was... So, it wasn't a waste of time. Yeah, it was worthwhile. It's worthwhile. But it's worthwhile that other people are using it. Because I don't want to be up there on my own. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, honestly, it's such a feeling when I go up there and I come down and I say to my wife, someone been up there yesterday or the d- couple of days ago and put a lovely bunch of flowers. But they go nowhere to put it. They just place them on the cross. And I think that's sad. So I made a couple of concrete vases and they can put the flowers in there now. Oh, that's nice. And yes, that's that's what I've done lately. Right. So besides the cross, then, um, what other hobbies have you got? I know that you said that you like to go bowling. So any other any other things besides bowling? No, it's only bowling really, oh. and like I say, making things. Right. But at the moment, my main. Priority is the cross, because I've got to keep it going, and as long as I can, and I will. And when I fail, I hope someone else will take over. Right. Because I still think that 
if I cannot do it, if I can't get up there, I still want someone to do it. And there's a lot of people I think that will, but there are some people that can't get the materials. They'd have to travel from, say, Porth with the material, but I can become a part of that. I could have the material here. I could even get it ready for them and they can carry it up and deliver the car, the bag back to me and I will keep it topped up as long as I can. And that would be nice because people don't want to go and buy uh, uh, five litres of Santex to carry up a mountain and splash it across. <laughs> and people don't want to buy lime, which I've gone into now, because it's lighter. So nobody's going to buy a bag of lime and go up there and do it. But I will supply it as long as I can. You still be involved in it, yeah. yeah. And I think as well. Now I want to be involved in it. Yeah. But if there's other people that want to do it, but their whole back is material, just drop me a line and I'll have it ready. And they can carry it up and I'll show them what to do. Or then people are not dull, they know what they're doing. They can yeah. do it their own way, whatever. But I'm sure there's a lot of people that got loved ones ashes up there would want to do it. But it's difficult to get the materials up there. But I but think I, with... I can help them that way. Uh, but I think with, like, if people want to find out more information, there's obviously the book, which I highly recommend. They're on the cross. But then there's also a Facebook page called the Trialo Mountain Cross Group Support Group. Support, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So people can obviously go on to there. So tell us a little bit about that Facebook group then. And um, the people who are interested may want to join. Well, I don't really know much about them because, um, what can I say? They, there's not a lot said about them, but I know they're there. But there's no reason at the moment for me to get in contact with them because I can do most of the things that I do. But what I just said earlier on, but material wise, and they don't know how to get up there and they want to get up there. If they want to give, come and give me a hand to see the way that I do it. They can contact you. Me a line, yeah. Then. Yeah. And I'm always game to send take someone up there and to do or to continue what I am doing now because I won't be here forever. And it would be nice in 50 years time that it's still going. I think it will with, with, that, with that Facebook group now, now that it's, and, you know, everybody knows about the cross. So I think that, they, you know, there'll be plenty of people who would be willing to, mm. would love to get involved and I'm pretty sure about that. But the only thing is with that is when it was... Uh, what's the word, not demolished, vandalised. There was talk about hundreds of people going up there and we was told by health and safety, mountain rescue, police and everybody else involved that we cannot do it. You cannot take hundreds of people on a mountain because of health and safety. So I think they got together and said, well, we take 12 up there and they, nobody could say anything about that. And they put it back together. So I think that there is a certain amount of them will continue what I'm doing. Yeah. But I'm willing to help them now before I pass away, just to give them some idea how to do it easy, because it can be hard work. <laughs> but and I can show them where Obviously, I can only show certain people because when the, when the kids go up there, they look for these things. They look for the, all the water traps and they'll empty them because <laughs> they've done it before. But I want to rehide them. And <laughs> yeah. That, and keeps, the kids, keeps you young, though, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Keeps, yeah. And obviously, I take up lots of things that I can't do in one go because I've got all the right quantity. So I take it up and hide it. Sometimes I forget where I hide them. <laughs> Very often I do forget where I put the little bag of cement or 
you know, the little bag of sand or the, the gallon of, well, not a gallon of water, I don't do the water, where I hid the lime, the pack of lime, and so I could spend half a day looking for it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but it's, you know, it's, it's a great story, and, um, you know, eight, 18 years, I, I actually remember, my, you know, myself when, I, I think I read the Ron the Leader article, you know, and it's it's amazing to think that it's, you know, it's still going, and there's people all over the world, I you know, know yeah. who, who talk about it. And my daughter lives in Greece, and she got British friends visiting Greece all the time, and they mention things, and I mentioned, and they buy the book, and... But like you say in the Google, that's awesome. That's something man. else. Because anybody throughout the world, if they know the name, they can punch it in and they can have a look for this. Uh, yeah, and I think as well, even on, on Google, if you type in like Ronda, things to do in the Ronda or Ronda landmarks, you know, mm-hmm. the Trial of Cross comes up, you know, and it's reviewed and things like that. So, you know, you've got that as well. People will always, you know, if they're interested in the Ronda... Yeah. They'll, <coughs> they'll find that about, out about that cross. Um, but it, it, although it's called the Ron the Cross in the book, um, the re, it's Triala Trial, Mountain Triala Cross. Mountain Cross, yeah. But if you, you punch that in and it will Google down straight there. And yeah. That's mad, isn't it? You know, it's yeah. Mad. I would have thought, 50, you know, 18 years ago that there would be street view of, of, of the cross. So, yeah, I never funny. thought that would happen. Yeah. So um, mm-hmm. any sort of, you know, final things to to wrap up? Uh, anything, any final message before before we wrap up? Well, I'd like to thank everybody that's supported me. Um, I apologise to the ones that I offended by doing it. But I can't help that one. And I just love the way people use it. It have really made it worthwhile. That people think it's good enough to put their loved ones' remains up there. Which is wonderful. I think it's wonderful. Mm. And that's where I've got to keep it going. When I was a little boy back in Sydney, New South Wales, my grandpa used to sing of his home across the sea, his deep voice rising in the still Australian air, and this is what my grandpa sang to me. The mist on the mountains, the rivers running free, the big men walking home. From the mines The coal dust clinging to them As they slowly climb the hills If I could see the Ronda one more time If I could see the Ronda once again The dust from that coal made its mark upon my soul. I'd love to see the Ronda one more time. Five hundred voices singing. In the chapel on the hill The day that my old grandpa passed away But I didn't cry On the day that he died Cause 
Cause I know where my old grandpa went that day He's walking down through Tyler's town In the rumble of his dreams He's standing on a hill above the mines The choirs fill the air As he's proudly standing there He's singing in the rumble one more time He's singing in the rumble once again He walks where he used to run as a child The dust from that cold made its mark upon his soul and he's gone to see the wrong one more time.